Hi, today we're going to look at inventory fulfillment in GP. And this happens to be Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015 R2. But this is true in older versions as well. So what I have is I have pulled up on the screen a sales order processing document. And I have a particular item out there. And I'm going to open up the item maintenance for this item. And then let's go to the quantities for a moment here. And I'm going to pull up the quantity for the warehouse. Let me pull that up. And we can see we have 20 items out there. And there's one allocated right now. And it does happen to be this particular uh, invoice that we have pulled up on the screen. So it is this sales order processing invoice, invoice 1031. To prove that out, what I'm going to do is just drill down on allocated here. And you could see there it is, invoice 1031. So that's the invoice that I have allocated. Now, allocated actually means that I am going to reserve one of my quantities for this particular invoice. So I have 20 on hand, and if I have one allocated, that means I have 19 available to sell. But I haven't matched up the specific item in inventory for this order yet. So let me come back in and pull up my batch again and pull up my transaction. Okay, so here it is again. If I were to expand on this, you're going to see right now the quantities fulfilled, which means I haven't basically created the shipment yet or I haven't pulled aside that piece of inventory to use the specific piece of inventory to use for this order. And that's what the fulfillment process is. Now, when you're setting up your types of sales order documents, you could decide if you want a separate fulfillment pro process or if you want it to automatically occur. If an item automatically occurs, then when you enter it in, it will not only allocate it, but it'll fulfillment. If you want it separated, separated then you would just mark that you want it as a separate fulfillment process. So you can see here is the invoice setup for this invoice type sample. And I had marked, and you need to do this when you set it up, that a separate fulfillment process would indeed be used. So it automatically left the quantity fulfilled as zero. So to fulfill this, I could either pull up the order under options and choose allocate or fulfill and choose to fulfill it, or what I can do is I could pull up the batch and fulfill the entire batch at one time. Or I could go to order fulfillment, and that happened to be an invoice already, and I could select my invoice that I created, and I could fulfill it this way if I choose to fulfill it, clicking on manually here and just changing the fulfilled or choosing fulfill all. So there are a variety of ways I can do fulfillment. An easy way to do it would be to pull up the orders as they're being packaged for shipment, putting them in a batch, and fulfilling the batch at the entire time. That's an easy way to do it. So now I'm going to come in, go to my options, choose allocate or fulfill, and I want to fill the entire order. And as you can see, there were no exceptions, which tells me that there was not any problems. So let me pull up that invoice again. And again, of course, the same would be true if I were setting up an order. And now you can see that this is fulfilled. Now we could also put process hold on documents or on a type of document that will prevent us from fulfilling as well. What is the advantage of this? Well, you can't accidentally post an invoice until it's been fulfilled. And this is particularly beneficial if you're using serial numbered items and you don't want to assign the serial number item until you pack it because you don't know what it's going to be and you don't want to make the assumption, then you would want to do a separate fulfillment process for that. So that's a little quick and dirty on fulfillments and using them as a separate step. I hope this helps.